Gotta love water, it's so good. What is up guys, your boy Wayne Jackson and welcome to my channel. So in my last video I made on becoming a software engineer at a top tech company, I mentioned that freelancing was one of those things that you can do to become a better programmer and engineer. After that, I was asked by several of you guys after showing my Upwork.com portfolio, how I was so successful on that website. So in this video, I will be giving you guys four tips on how to be a successful freelance software developer on Upwork.com. Let's get into it. So before we get into the tips, we're gonna start with a little bit of a backstory as to how I started freelancing on Upwork.com. Y'all are gonna learn that I love to tell stories. So if you're feeling a little bit impatient and you wanna get right into those tips, I will not be offended. You can go ahead and click right there and I will see you over there. But for those of you that are still here, I wanna talk about how I discovered Upwork.com and why I started freelancing to begin with while I was in college. So I was finishing up my third semester internship and I was basically without a job at that point. I basically had no income and it wasn't like a panic state. It was just more so like, well, what am I going to do next while I'm wrapping up my last semester in college? So I'm thinking to myself like, well, I could go get a typical nine to five that most college students work, but I don't think it's going to pay well and it's not going to continue to cultivate my ability as a programmer. So I thought to myself, why not develop for money for people? Why not build things with the skills that I had acquired during my internship and while building my own personal apps? Why not use those skills to actually make money? So that's exactly what I did. However, I was at a loss. I'm like, well, how exactly am I supposed to find people that want things built? So what I ended up doing was doing a quick Google search, basically searching for freelance Android development jobs. And I came across a website that was known as Odesk, Dot com, which is now known as Upwork.com. So I thought to myself like, oh, I hit the jackpot, like we're in there. I basically have essentially a pool of people that are looking for Android apps to be developed by me, right? I didn't think about anything else at that point. So I set up my profile, hooked everything up, got my profile picture on fleet, uh, basically for my description in there. I thought everything was on point. I got my skills listed. I'm in there, right? I'm in there, I'm about to make the big bucks. But the first thing I noticed, first thing I noticed, and I was immediately intimidated by the amount of people that were applying for each contract. I'm like, how am I supposed to stand out in this crowd? So I'm thinking like, well, the only way I could see myself actually landing a contract is if I lower my rate. And what I had as my rate at the beginning was essentially what I was making during my internship. But I decided like, no, we're gonna lower it even lower than that. We're gonna go $12 an hour. I came across a particular contract that said basically that the client was looking to be taught Android while building an Android app, which they would use afterwards, right? It essentially would be a collaborative coding session done over Skype, but you would also be working on their app at the same time. And of course the client could use whatever skills you had taught them during that session to continue working on the project in their free time. Or you could work on it when the client was not there and then just build them for your time. And after completing that project successfully, I was gifted with my first five star rating. And that set me apart from everybody else that was applying for most of these jobs that I was looking at and things went up from there. But that gets me right into my first tip, which is to start cheap. The reason I say to start cheap is that it increases your chances of getting your foot in the door and getting that first contract. Landing that first contract will essentially allow you to get an opportunity to gain feedback or what they call the rating. The rating essentially is going to tell any potential clients for contracts that you apply for in the future what type of work to expect of you. So if you have a five star rating and you do well on every project that you had in the past, naturally your clients are going to have way more confidence in hiring you and picking you for a particular job that you apply for. So it's also important not just to start cheap, which increases your chances of getting your foot in the door, but to make sure that you are taking contracts that you can complete with success. And that leads me to my second tip, which is to get your skills up. Now I know it might sound obvious, but before you can become a successful freelance developer, it's important to at least have a little bit of skill in whatever services you plan on offering to your clients. This will ensure that you're at least able to complete fairly simple projects with success. And like I said, success leads to good ratings, good ratings lead to more contracts, which leads to more money you dig. For example, if I wanted to be a front-end web developer, I would focus on learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And there are many resources out there for learning whatever you need to learn, whether it be books or things on the web. And in a future video, I plan on talking about what I think are some of the best resources for learning how to program. 
Once you feel like you have a good grasp of the programming language and tools necessary to develop in your said specialty, I recommend that you start to cultivate those skills that you just learned by building and working on a personal project. What this will do is it'll teach you a few things. It'll first of all, it'll teach you how to turn an idea into a reality, which is essentially what you will be doing for your clients. You will also learn how to scope a project, which is basically a fancy term for determining what the objectives and the constraints of a project are. After you pass the scoping phase and figure out exactly what it is that you want to build, it's time to move on to the fun stuff, which is actually working on your project. While working on your personal project, you will find that you run into a scenario where you know exactly what you want to do with your project, but you don't know how you are going to do it. This will be your main way of growing as a developer, and this is a big learning opportunity. So there's a chance to basically fill in your knowledge gaps. Once you are confident in your skills that you can build something worthwhile, it's almost time to make some money. So let's head right over to the computer, and I'm gonna talk about tip number three, which is making sure you have a good profile. All right, guys, so here we are on my Upwork.com portfolio. As you can see here, having a good profile is a fairly straightforward thing. Just ensure that you have a clear profile picture that basically shows your face and shows your client who you are be sure to have an accurate title as to what services you offer as well as the description is very important as well so just be pretty precise here and talk about what you specialize in and what services you offer in the next section here is the portfolio just list anything here that you think is relevant to your experience this is obviously a very outdated upwork profile but this is the one that i use and it's the one that helped me to land contracts so that is why i'm sharing it with you guys but yeah as you see here i just listed apps that i worked on down here in the skills just be sure to be accurate like i said it goes back to just giving your client more information about yourself being sure that you're describing what it is that you actually have to offer as far as a skill set and what it is you specialize in and then of course you have your test this is basically more social proof that you can do the things that you say you are able to do i'm not sure how seriously these are actually taken on this website though because you can find most of the answers online then of course at the time i put my employment history i listed my internship there and of course my degree from the university of toledo in computer science and engineering that is pretty much it as far as a profile goes so i will see you guys back on set and for my last tip be sure to personalize your messages to some extent when you are applying for these contracts now i know it may be tempting to copy and paste the same message to many clients in order to increase your application volume. And volume is definitely a good thing when it comes to applying for contracts. But I personally recommend against this, reason being is that these copy and pasted messages are usually easy to spot. The strategy I think works best is to actually understand the exact requirements of the job you're applying for by reading the description thoroughly and customizing your message to fit the needs of that project. This is a good chance to ask any questions you may have about a particular project that you're applying for. And this is a chance to sweet talk your clients. Essentially, this is an opportunity for you to write a love song to them as to why you guys are meant to be and why they should hire you to build what they need built. Now, I'm in no way saying to, I need water, mouth a little dry. Now, I'm in no way saying to handwrite every message. It's okay to use some type of template and then customize it to the particular project. But really what I'm trying to send home here is to pay attention to what you're applying for and make sure it's actually something that you want to take on. So if you guys are still rocking with me this late in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We are already over 100 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all the love. That is the type of thing that keeps me encouraged to pump out these videos for you guys. I just like to teach and encourage and motivate, man. Like this feels really good and I really appreciate all the love and support. So if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also for my previous subscribers or any potential new subscribers, be sure to hit that notification bell as well so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. But yeah, be sure to follow me on IG and shoot me a message on there if you have any questions or if there's something that you want me to cover in a future video. I am really responsive on there and I love to hear from you guys. But again, thank you for all the love and support and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.